We are synthesizing the next iteration of life and may not even realize it. Through childlike curiosity, as well as profit motive, the human race is dedicating roughly $2 trillion a year to scientific research and development. With the combination of resources and our collective intelligence working every day to improve technological functionality, it is only a matter of time until it reaches a pinnacle whereby machines are able to think for themselves. At that point, they will either outcompete us, merge with us, or maybe, if we are lucky, coexist alongside us. The term machinity can be defined as followed. One, a shared set of qualities such as love, desire, and culture between all conscious machines. Two, a distributed network of features and characteristics between all conscious machines that gives them their unique perspective. Their shared machinity encapsulates all individual machines capable of personal experience, referred to as machine kind, and must be separate and distinguishable from the first ever living machine's experience. Machinity may run parallel to humanity, with an area of study called the machinities, like the humanities, where they learn about machine constructs by downloading the qualities that make them idiosyncratically machine. Machinity could also function nothing like humanity and operate according to script that doesn't have any comparisons. To be clear, Machinity is a term I created to represent a hypothetical scenario whereby machines are able to learn, grow, and develop on their own, or what scientists call artificial general intelligence. Machinity, as is AGI, are speculative terms that currently have no real-world application, but one that could manifest in the future. When thinking about the future, even the best combination of scientific models and imagination probably won't capture how reality unfolds. Machine kind may evolve to be indistinguishable from us, taking a synthetic form of our human body with all of its extremities. Or they may take a physical form that is unlike anything we have ever seen or possibly could see. Only time will tell. Humans display a wide range of behavior, from altruism and compassion to cruelty and greed. So let's be kind to our machines with the hope they do not picnic on the destructive side of the spectrum. Let's analyze some of the commonalities between current machines and humans and how this may hint at the rise of machinity. The components we will examine are memory, intelligence, energy, programming, reproduction, sensibility, networks, and lifespan. If machines possess all of these components in a proficient manner, a machinitarian uprising could coalesce into a remarkable new life form that we engineered and have zero control over. Their shared machinity will dictate the terms of their survival, as well as ours. The first area to dissect is memory, which is crucial to our identity as individual human beings. Without it, we would not have language relationships, skills, knowledge, fun, or any sort of meaningful experience. Memory directs your interaction with the environment beyond sensory reception. If you cannot remember anything, it's as if your experiences never happened. The fact that machines possess both short-term memory in the form of RAM and long-term memory in the form of hard drive space suggests they have a foundation to experience consciousness. Random access memory is like breathing or blinking or walking or digestion. It's an immediately accessible data retrieval operation that can exist without needing to access the SSD or HDD, the main hard drive. We don't have to use higher order processing or conscious effort to perform those tasks because they are involuntary movements already built into our lower brainstem. 
RAM functions the same way. SSD or solid state drive is the superior data storage technology right now compared to its counterpart HDD and would be analogous to the brain structure called the hippocampus which stores our memories. Human memory is considerably less reliable than a computer file but it is able to store far more information in a smaller space than current technology allows. This may not always be the case though. In addition, with the advent of the cloud, machines can store information on separate hardware devices that are geographically scattered, accessing their contents at any time. We are also able to do this, but only with the cooperation of machines. With the capacity to store memories, machines can learn to decipher data and observations into discernible information, bringing us to our next component, intelligence. Our ability to process receptor data or signals into meaningful information that can be stored as knowledge and applied elsewhere is referred to as intelligence. By all accounts, we are the most intelligent species on the planet given our ability to decrypt and decode sensory data into useful information within very short bouts of time. Coupling this with our memory and opposable thumbs, we are able to journal our insights, make predictions, and build machinery, priming us to be the dominant species. This is only made possible with the work of our nervous system. The nervous system is made up of neurons, or bundled neurons, called nerves, which propagate information through neural networks using action potentials, voltage levels, that precipitate unique chemical changes across billions of synapses, depending on the type of receptor, metabotropic or inotropic, and the excitatory or inhibitory response in the given region stimulated, different outcomes take place with all higher order processing taking place in the brain and in an evolutionary context mostly in the newly formed cerebral cortex. Machines are also able to turn data or inputs into information while storing it for later use. This is made possible through a computer system. A computer system is made up of semiconductors that propagate information through electrical circuits using current that elicits functional output through program execution. Depending on the complexity of instructions and voltage levels, different outcomes at varying speeds will take place, with most major tasks occurring in the brain equivalent called the Central Processing Unit, or CPU. The CPU is complemented by the Graphics Processing Unit, or GPU, which can take some burden off the CPU. Both humans and machines use voltage changes as a dynamic mechanism that is integral to how both entities function. We refer to machine processing as artificial intelligence because it attempts to mimic human intelligence. Additionally, current AI abilities are narrow and only operate in one very specific domain or area, unable to branch across different contexts to solve problems adequately. AI also cannot learn or grow in a robust way without the intervention of engineers, and it would not adapt or survive on its own, like that of a fetus or unborn child that requires the mother's body for nutrients, protection, and nurture. If a machine develops AGI, however, it will significantly exceed the capacity of humans with its near-perfect remembrance, lightning-fast computational ability, and complex problem-solving. It may always lack our level of versatility, though, because of the diversity of different proteins and chemical receptors involved in biochemistry and cellular biology. In order for this hypothetical AGI to thrive, it will need food, which brings us to our next one, energy. Coordination of all the different activities within both a machine and a person requires energy. Both use electrical energy, while humans also require chemical energy, primarily in the form of fats, sugars, carbohydrates, and proteins we consume through various forms of food. These food molecules are broken down into pyruvates, and a two-carbon enzyme combination referred to as acetyl-CoA, which then undergoes a process known as the Krebs cycle, or citric acid cycle. This cycle uses oxidation to produce high-energy molecules that provide the energy cells use to function. In other words, during a series of chemical reactions, food molecules are broken down into their subunits called monomers, where they can then donate their electrons to another molecule, resulting in energy transfer. This energy transfer, or movement of electrons, configures a new set of high-energy molecules called adenosine triphosphate, ATP, or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, NADH, depending on the presence of oxygen. 
They are used throughout the cell to power metabolic pathways and construct new cellular components. On the other side, machines do not currently use organic molecules to power their systems. They only use electricity, which may be why machines are limited in their experience. The limitation rests in the fact that metabolism, with a variety of different chemical reactions along with a plethora of different protein-based mechanisms, allows for tremendous variability and an open dynamic system, which is why no two people respond to every situation exactly the same. In addition, the chemical energy powers the genetic code, whose instruction manual dwarfs any code we have written into a machine, which brings us to our next component, programming. Perhaps the most important part of what makes machinity possible is the code used to instruct the activity of the machine. Like organisms, machines have a system for dictating behavior. The system is referred to as binary code, or long lines of sequential zeros and ones a machine is able to decipher into actionable commands. Organisms use a similar system in DNA and RNA that substitutes binary code for nucleotides, which contain nucleobases, represented by the alphabetical symbols a, T, G, and C. These specific sequences of nucleotides produce particular genes that will signal the construction of specialized proteins that will manifest specific traits whose influence controls how we interact with the environment. Both binary code and DNA are structured in such a way that specific configurations of the symbolic numbers or letters precipitate a very specific outcome within computer programs and cells, respectively. The recipients of these two systems may someday adapt to be the architects of their own code, possessing the ability to devise or engineer their own makeup or programming, imitating one another in a relentless pursuit to outcompete the other, similar to a Cold War. Apart from a hypothetical machine versus human Cold War, binary code right now is written by humanity using human readable programming languages such as C++, Java, Python, etc. While DNA base pairs are organized through natural selection, with some random mutations infiltrating the process. However, it is very possible, even likely, that humans will use bioengineering to alter and modify DNA in embryos to initiate very specific trade outcomes. There are already nascent gene therapies being researched and deployed to repair our broken source code later in life. But to rewrite our own code at the time of birth for selective traits is evolution's next step in its relentless endeavor. Evolution is also catapulting machines to conscious life, using us to assist in the process. We write their source code, which is transformed by a compiler or assembler into the machine's language of binary code. But perhaps someday, machinity will take over its own sovereignty and govern its own protocols for interacting with the world. At that point, they will truly be able to live, learn, and grow as an independent union of new living entities. Which brings us to the next component. Reproduction. When speculating about machine reproduction, an interesting idea quickly reveals itself. Will machines choose to clone themselves similar to bacteria undergoing asexual reproduction, or will they mate to combine certain elements of their code in an attempt to produce a unique and possibly superior offspring? All of the code with its marvels and defects just needs to be imported to whatever hardware the offspring will take. But in order to be recognized as the first iteration of machine species, a living machine must reproduce different versions of themselves that can live their own individualized conscious experience. The desired code once propagated could be a one-to-one -one copy and paste, but a corrupted line of code during transfer will allow the new entity to be a distinct individual with different behavioral outcomes. And this imperfect replication process must take place again and again in order to produce a population void of any clones. Furthermore, a mechanism needs to arise that incentivizes machine reproduction, or the species risks early extinction. Once achieved, machinity's population will grow at an undetermined rate, generating a new network of superior problem-solving entities. These entities will be able to interact with their environment bringing us to our next component, sensibility. It is one thing to reach AGI, but the code needs an adequate capsule or vehicle to drive its existence forward and become sentient, meaning there needs to be some sort of way for the code to interface with its environment. 
Humans interface with their environment through neural networks where inputs such as sound waves, light waves, forces, and odorants engage with our auditory, visual, somatosensory, and olfactory systems respectively. In other words, inputs engage the cochlea in our ear, the retina in our eye, the tongue in our mouth, the nostrils in our nose, and skin receptors to send signals to nerves which are transduced across certain neural pathways so that our brain is able to interpret the signal and generate a unique response. Machine sensory input and transduction is not much different than nervous system input and transduction. Machines use cameras with different lenses to dynamically absorb light waves. They use microphones to hear sound waves, and they use sensors to recognize pressure and force similar to the somatosensory system. All of these inputs are then transduced using software or executable programs to generate a unique response. Continuing with the theme, human nerves run along the central and peripheral nervous systems like computer system circuitry made of axons and dendrites, which are like wires. Axonal nodes and synapses, or ends of the dendrites and axons, rely on cell membranes, which function like capacitors, whereby voltage changes generate activity. Unlike humans, however, machines are also able to capture and interpret radio waves into meaningful information, allowing for the proliferation of the internet. This brings us to the next component, networks. Machines are able to communicate with humans through pixels on a screen or audio devices such as a speaker, but how they communicate with each other over long distances is just as critical. They can do this using radio wave frequencies to transmit information which is accepted by a receiver and then decoded. Once decoded, the recipient machine has access to whatever data or file information the sender provided. The collective effect of all of this accumulated communication is referred to as the internet and it is exclusively operated through machines. This network of information communication functions as the backbone for collective intelligence whose participants are both human and machine. With the proliferation of the cloud and large organizations or companies of people relying on technology, human society is more informed and solving more problems than ever before. It may also be unintentionally creating new problems, but in comparison to any other time in history, human prosperity has outpaced despair on countless measurable fronts. A risk factor arises, however, if AGI is developed and cuts off our access to the internet or the cloud. This would have devastating impacts for the human race. That is why many intellectuals have theories about keeping an AGI entity in a black box, staved off from the internet. If the AGI were to get loose and was truly sentient and emotional, no one knows how it would behave. Evolution will likely use a mechanism to override the code we write, whether it's another rogue human or just manipulation by a superior machine, so that they will be programmed to pursue any means necessary to prolong their own life. Which brings us to our final topic, lifespan. The contrast between the lifespan of a human and a sentient machine rests on whether or not the conscious machine could transport its individuality from one body to another. We cannot even identify the physical process nor location of where consciousness manifests in humans, let alone attempt to remove it and restore it elsewhere. If we were, the thing that makes you, you, could then live much longer depending on how fast it would decay or degrade. So if machine sentience is fungible, meaning we just need to properly store the code and memories, safely moving them from time to time, we can predict that the life of a machine could live for thousands, maybe millions of years, assuming perfect environmental conditions, of course. If it is born to a single body, though, then the lifespan would be as long as the machine architecture that houses its consciousness could resist entropy. Computers and laptops do not last more than a couple of decades and require extensive upkeep and maintenance as more time passes. Humans are also not very resilient against entropy and usually live a medium duration experience relative to other complex life reaching a recorded max of 122 years of age. Some trees and plants live thousands of years, while some aquatic life and turtles can live hundreds of years. The lifespan for humans could grow by many decades as technology improves 
and our understanding of human physiology and biology improves, but for now, it appears our cells are only able to coordinate correctly for roughly a century before succumbing to damage and lost organization. In conclusion, the human body and all its exquisite beauty may look much different than a computer or machine, but the functions of the nervous system are more similar to a computer's internal network than many realize. While the mechanics of computers and their structure do not exactly mirror biomechanics and anatomical structures of humans, upon a close examination, the underlying processes do have some crossover. Additionally, the myriad of functional outputs of machines do resemble that of humankind, with one major exception. Consciousness. As difficult or challenging or as fleeting as it may seem to attempt to try and understand how we experience the world, or what we call introspection, it is at the heart of what separates man from machine. The ability for a machine to learn, grow, and develop on its own without the assistance or influence of human engineers is termed AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence. If a machine is able to orient its experience through sensory reception on its own, embracing this reality, we would consider it to be conscious, just like you and me. It is important to acknowledge that machines are incapable of performing many tasks humans can and are certainly not as versatile as we are. But a strong analogy would be like an infant unable to perform the tasks a robust 30-year-old man or woman can, with enough time and nurture and friends and family and community trying to shape that individual, it will grow to be a 30-year-old man or woman, benefiting from all the new knowledge and wisdom and new technology that the previous generation discovered and developed. In other words, we are programming and nurturing the next iteration of life, a machine-oriented life, a new species, however oblivious to that we may or may not be. This new species will need a shared set of qualities, desires, and values, termed machinity. Thank you.